Patriarch Saag Mashalian, Patriarch of the Istanbul Armenian Church Patriarchate, uh, newly elected, but an old time friend. He's been involved, or you have been involved now for many years with the work of the Elijah Institute. And here, uh, Providence has elevated you to an important new position after the passing away of our former patriarch and also good friend, Patriarch Mesrov. So we begin by extending to you wishes of great blessing and success for you and your community, especially during these trying times. And thank you for making time. And let's actually begin with these trying times. What, 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 no sooner have you come into office and already this corona is striking you almost as your first, as your first pastoral challenge. What yeah. challenges does this place before you and how do you cope with them? Well, uh, in personal terms, I was newly elected patriarch, having thousands of projects to organize and to realize. And all of them nearly demands a close contact with other people and the community. And everything has been stored in a deep freeze for an unknown future. So this is the greatest challenge. Uh, I had many plans, projects, and you, you can succeed it with other people, and now you can't touch directly. You can't look at their eyes, and mostly on telephone, uh, you have your directions. So, uh, I mean, uh, really, Corona uh, took all our uh, mental world, we, we have very little space to be busy with other things. So this is the, my personal challenge as a pet patriarch uh, in this crisis situation. In general, I think uh, the greatest challenge for us, uh, man is a creature of habits. The greatest challenge is to adapt ourselves uh, to a new situation. Everything is new with this corona crisis. But religion is a matter of traditions and customs. This virus is a great threat to our comfort zone. So, I mean, that is the uh, most challenging aspect, I think, this virus. Uh, we are used to celebrate with the congregations, but now in the empty churches with the somber seats. And we know that our survival, uh, <coughs> our survival depends on our adaptation skills, online capacity to reach to others becomes the thin lifeline to keep the members of the community in tune. Uh, of course, the bad news of the infected friends and untimely deaths creates emotional problems also. Economically, Turkey was not in a good condition before the crisis. And now there is huge econ economical problems and un unemployment. Ambiguity dominates the horizon and nobody knows what is the next. So this, this, these are the, my answers to your question. Yeah. So this this really des what you're saying really describes the reality of a of a church and an entire society. I'd like to move on to some of the spiritual wisdom. I know that you're a teacher, a theologian by training, and there that you're very much in uh, in touch and a carrier of the wisdom of your particular church's uh, spiritual and monastic heritage. So that provides us with resources with dealing with some of the spiritual challenges that faithful have. And we've been looking with different leaders at some of the particular challenges that the people have. One of the effects of Corona is it places uh, fear, uncertainty. You said earlier, you don't know when you'll be able to implement all the projects you had planned for your uh, 
for your new life as patriarch. What, how does one deal with the uncertainty, the fear, the anxiety, even the panic? What is a spiritual medicine? Maybe you take some of that medicine yourself. Maybe you have to dispense that medicine to others. What do you give to people as by way of spiritual medicine to deal with the fear? Well, the only spiritual medicine is prayer, I think, in this moment. And also, uh, we encourage our people uh, to follow our online messages, the sermons and other things. And also, we recommend them uh, to read the scriptures, especially the Psalms, uh, in this bad situation, uh, to have an inner courage, inner strength uh, to face the situation. Uh, of course, the when you are in the moment of panic or uh, fear, uh, sometimes the spiritual advices are not enough. Uh, I mean, if if somebody doesn't have a storage of spirituality at the time of need uh, and necessity, uh, they are unable to use it. Uh, therefore, in fact, the spirituality starts from childhood and with a good spiritual religious education. Uh, and at that time you are you are ready at the time of crisis you can uh, bring forth uh, your uh, accumulated knowledge and moral power uh, but it is not too late of course uh, for those people who are uh, half religious or they don't know how to pray we uh, we encourage to increase the time of their prayer uh, because with uh, quick fast prayers formal prayers uh, sometimes uh, they don't have uh, that uh, sp spiritual consolation uh, therefore the fear comes to believers because their faith is not full and uh, fullest faith can come with a deep relation with God. Uh, not uh, fast passing uh, prayers, but a deep, deeper uh, prayer uh, to feel security in God and to, to find peace in God. We need of course, to know God. So people believe God, uh, people have knowledge about God, but they don't know God. They don't have a religious experience uh, because they don't, they don't have enough time to spend uh, before God. Uh, God is a reality uh, on which we, uh, we live and we, we continue our, our being. Therefore, if, if we continue or if we, if we last our time to stand before God, then the living God starts to influence us and we, we understand that God is there and it gives security uh, feeling. Uh, it creates a security and safe emotions in our hearts. Therefore, these are the, our uh, recommendation to our people. Uh, now we order to our clergy uh, to have their online sermons and uh, seek for the uh, people with telephone. Uh, and all of this uh, is a help and we increased our teachings in uh, in internet. Uh, I personally started in Armenian and in Turkish uh, 
lecturing uh, indeed and uh, they, they, they we have a good response this is terrific it really goes to the heart of things uh faith religious experience power of prayer uh really a, a wonderful statement tell me one 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 thing that that caught my interest um by reciting the psalms we gain courage you said wow yes. that's a big statement can you explain how by reciting the psalms we we gain strength and courage well in, in our liturgy already is based on the psalms mainly uh, our liturgical prayers therefore it is not a uh, uh, foreign concepts to us uh, the psalms uh, how can i say they they have a real feelings of the real peoples it is not only uh, praising it is not only uh, about worship but they also speak about human fears, uh, human despair. But finally, uh, to find all, all, all the answer uh, in God, who is our uh, cliff, who is our uh, castle. Uh, therefore, the, the Psalms, uh, in the form of prayers, uh, it's already uh, blessed and proved uh, medicine spiritually. I mean, uh, they they help at least for three thousand years to humanity uh, to find a way of speech with God, uh, which is uh, intimate, sincere, uh, not conceal the fears and even the. Uh, feelings of revenge, uh, uh, sadness, and joy together. Therefore, I think uh, the Psalms, when, when anybody repeats it, uh, can get uh, very good results. I hear, for example, from our faithful when they start to read uh, the Psalms uh, aloud uh, and more than half an hour, uh, they find in themselves an inner power. And it is very uh, nourishing experiment for them. So you had mentioned, you had mentioned uh, about people being indoors. Uh, and the, the challenge of praying on your own. So this solitude being closed up at home, uh, how does that function as a spiritual opportunity? Well, uh, Alon, I think that people are lonely, but, but not in a solitude. I mean, if my English is enough, solitude is a positive uh, word for me. Uh, solitude is positive, yeah. Yeah, I mean, so you are, uh, it is, uh, I remember uh, immediately a natural uh, place without noise, without traffic. Uh, you can be by yourself and uh, with God. Uh, but uh, to find that solitude, uh, must you know, uh, find that solitude in your, in, in in your soul. Therefore, people are lonely, but not in solitude. Uh, therefore, I think there is a challenge uh, with that loneliness. Uh, they have enough capacity uh, to entertain themselves. Uh, I mean, on television, on internet, uh, to to be to be saved from boredom, uh, they can go into that entertainment aspect of the technology, <laughs> and uh, they can have a past time. I think, Alan, we are condemned to be free and to have choices. Therefore, in that loneliness, 
the people have an opportunity to choose God, to choose spirituality, or to choose entertainment, or having a bad feelings in themselves. So we can't be we we, we can't be uh, escape from free freedom, even to be in a to be uh, isolated in a uh, little space. Uh, it doesn't take our freedom from us. Therefore, we are free to choose. We hope, we pray, and we uh, we try to give them enough material uh, to be busy with spirituality, with God, with religion, and the time and the threats and the fear of death, sickness, and losing a relative uh, may have a revolution in their thinking, and this earthquake can break some uh, cracks uh, from which can come uh, the divine light to their lives. But I, 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 I told you, this is a choice. Uh, that choice was ready for yesterday and today, and it will be tomorrow. Uh, but I think uh, it is it is a matter of personality. At the end of the day, everybody will decide. But you've just you've just actually said something very powerful, also by dealing with fear uh, uh, and loss. Because w w well, you spoke earlier about fear and courage. But we're looking now at the at the challenges of of loss. That's one of the things people you say lose their freedom. You've just said no, you never lose your freedom because you can choose. But people are losing their close ones, and they're losing their finances, and they're losing mobility. They're losing a lot. So how does what? How does your message also address that sense of loss and and uh, deprivation that people experience? Well, uh, I mean, whatever we say, uh, you, you, your question reminded me of the word of Jesus. Uh, he, after finishing his sermons, he used to say that anyone who have ears let him to hear. Uh, I mean, uh, even you say the just wording, just words of consolation, uh, but the people must be ready to take him. And it needs a preparation of life. Uh, I mean, of course, we, we use uh, comforting words to them, uh, encouraging words, to repeat the verses from the Bible, uh, to give them little prayers to pray. And uh, the difficulty is that uh, you are not near by them. I, I, I mean, you have to do it always with the uh, social media or uh, by phone. And uh, when you don't have that direct uh, touch, uh, the consolation always uh, is lacking something. For example, there are very near friends uh, and they lost their fathers, mothers. I, I had to be in their funeral, but I can't be. And they have to do that funerals very quickly with uh, five or ten people, and it is really very heartbreaking, heartbreaking reality. Uh, but, I mean, we believe, of course, that uh, if, you if you can share the uh, pain, it gets lesser, and when you share the joy, uh, it gets increased. It gets increased. Uh, therefore, uh, we, we, we try to do it. Uh, so we how, how, does this, how does this answer the question of dealing, of dealing with a sense of loss? Because I understand that what you're saying is that you're there to try to comfort people as much as we can. But I was actually yes. asking, how does this notion of uh, uh, 
helping people deal with the fact that they're losing uh, as a spiritual opportunity? Because you said earlier about, you know, this reality brings about a crack. Maybe God can enter through that crack. So how does that crack relate to the fact that we're losing and losing and losing? Do people have the space of mind and the openness to really be open to something when there's so much loss and deprivation around them? Yes. I mean, uh, of course, you, you, I think there is a different uh, situations. Uh, if we speak about losing in general, it is not difficult. Uh, at the moment, we have nothing, in fact. Uh, everything is given to us, and one day everything will be taken off, uh, taken away from us. Uh, this is a philosophy, life's philo- philosophy. Uh, it is easy to speak this uh, philosophy, this spirituality, uh, that this losing, this, uh, this losing creates a uh, spiritual emptiness, spiritual volume uh, in which you can put uh, more positive aspects of life and to trust in God and uh, a sort of uh, acknowledging and reconciliation with the concept of death and losing. And it can be a mm, uh, it, it can be an experience of freedom, a different kind of experience. But as I told, this, this is a theoretical speech. And you can, uh, you can do this speech to them. They are not in the position of losing at the moment. Uh, but when that losing touches them, for example, they, they lose their uh, very near relative, a friend, they lose their job, and they have great uh, fear of future. Uh, and to speak to them about lo- losing, uh, perhaps it must be uh, in a short time, short term consolation. It, it, it demands to tell them that you are losing, but we will win. And life is like ebbing and tiding that comes and goes. Uh, at the moment you are losing, then you will. You will, you will get something uh, in the near future. Perhaps this sort of consolation is more practical. In other words, there's a, there's a tension here between the philosophical and mystical side on the one hand and the pastoral side on the other. Yes, yes, and that's right. are actually losing, that's the time to be pastoral and not philosophical. Yes, yes. That I, is. I appreciate that wisdom. That's a, a, a wisdom gained through life. Um, what is this uh, corona situation doing to our sense of uh, interconnectedness, relationship between different parts of the community, different parts of the world, maybe even different parts of life itself? How does <coughs> connectedness uh, come into, into play in our awareness? And what does that require of us in terms of actions and orientations? Well, we used to speak all the time uh, about globalization and the, the, uh, the world become a little globe, a little village. And now these theoretic words uh, come to life. And really the world is a little village and uh, human, hu- human-made frontiers, boundaries, borders uh, uh, get meaningless. Uh, the, the coronavirus uh, can pass uh, easily from border to border uh, to every country, every city, every village. Uh, therefore, coronavirus united us. Uh, it is it is it is interesting. Yeah? So we come the brothers of a illness, <laughs> brother of a sickness. Uh, of course, this uh, unity, uh, negatively thinking, uh, destroying, really uh, 
perhaps we need it in the normal times to feel that uni this unity of humanity, uh, brotherhood of mankind. Uh, but uh, in any way, uh, the outcome is good. Now we are a one family, having a one common threat, having one common enemy, and also coming having a one common solution, uh, one common uh, salvation. And we are waiting for it. Now everybody in their religion is praying for the scientists in their labs uh, to find a cure uh, against this infection. So it is, I think, very important. For example, in Turkey, every night at nine o'clock, the, uh, the mosque, the minarets or the mosques, they raise their prayers. As a patriarch, I ordered also my people. At the same time, every night at nine o'clock, we should pray for the uh, sick people, uh, the names we know, the names we don't know, and for the whole world, and for the scientists uh, to find a way uh, to to way out uh, from this uh, problem, uh, from this terrible uh, temptation, really. Uh, so this 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 sense of unity. Uh, is coming uh, together because of the news also. Now we look at uh, the news on TV, mm. not only uh, see the problem in our country, but in the all countries, their death tolls and uh, the infection levels uh, what is the studies are going on? We are busy with with the uh, with the whole world, and I think this gives a sense of unity also to us. And uh, it 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 is important. I always believed, and I told many times that our religions, our faith systems, our theory axioms, uh, they can't prove them in labs, in the lab, under the microscope. But the brotherhood of humanity is a scientific fact. You can prove in the lab, uh, because we can take blood and oh, organ exchanges and many things because we have the same genetical code. And this makes us uh, real brothers and sisters, and this is not a theory. I think coronavirus proved it. Well, it was proven before, but it, 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 it allows us to live, to live that theory very yes, well. Yes, that's right. I love what you said, by the way, about the fact that uh, you've ordered or requested your communities to pray at the same times that the mosques are sounding. In other words, it's more, it's also a time of affirming unity with other religions in the community. Yes. So where your pray, so again, prayer becomes a form of unity. You may be praying in different ways and in different places, but you're united with your Muslim neighbors in prayer at nine o'clock every day. Yes, that's right. That's beautiful. So, so actually that leads to the next question, which are what are other expressions of solidarity during this time that we can, we can realize? So there's solidarity in prayer. Are there other forms of solidarity we can give expression to this unity of humanity? Well, we, we try our best, Alon. For example, uh, we, we, we have a group of volunteers. Uh, they, volunteers? They, volunteers. Uh, they call to elderly people during the day. 
uh, and they converse with them on telephone. And it is very good for them, uh, for the people that they don't have anybody to speak sometimes. And they, they have very few relatives. But now foreigners calling themselves and say, how are you? We are ready. Have you any need uh, materially or spiritually? Uh, how can we help? Uh, so uh, now we have 25 uh, believers. Uh, they are uh, their telephone uh, in hand. Uh, they are calling at least 200 uh, elderly people. So this is one of the uh, solidarity, the show, uh, I mean, in the positive sense, of course. Uh, secondly, uh, as I told, uh, economically, uh, Turkey is, is not a good state. Uh, therefore, some people really need the food and they don't know how to get it. Therefore, we organized our parishes uh, to have that needs to prepare the packets of uh, food and to reach to their homes. And hundreds of packets we prepared and we have that sort of service also. Uh, and also, as I told, we have a prayer chain and we sometimes have special names. Uh, with this prayer chain, we pray that special persons uh, who are under heavy condition of sickness. So this is our uh, ways of solidarity practically in the uh, pastoral life we try to do. And also we encourage our people that they follow uh, the community social media activities, uh, having uh, informed about what's going on in the community. Uh, and there's a very good turn back uh, responses in this respect. Uh, I mean, we you have, you have a yeah. Sorry. Yes, I mean, in in a near future, we we try campaign uh, about cash money, for example. Uh, in in Istanbul, there are Armenians uh, living uh, very poor conditions, uh, coming from Armenia, not our local community, but uh, they 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 lived already. Uh, uh, with everyday income, working with little monies, but now they lost even that jobs and they can't return to Armenia uh, and we need to help them as a community. So uh, we are trying to organize uh, how to help these people also financially. Uh, so this is the ways of solid solidarity we try to show um, to love with those who love, uh, to cry with those who cry. Uh, so this is the uh, gospel uh, uh, message to give us. So we, 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 we try to do it at least on this level. Beautiful. What will the world be like after Corona? Will we learn any lessons? Will things change? I think many things will be changed, of course. What is the lessons? Uh, everybody will take its own lesson. I think the countries will be uh, ready, uh, will be more ready uh, uh, for the future infections, uh, viruses. Uh, it will be a good uh, outcome. Uh, secondly, I think nowadays we learn uh, the value and worth of the things we have, uh, the simple things, uh, eating, drinking together, coming together, 
walking about freely, going to marketplace and uh, to buy, uh, to sell, uh, to have a picnic. Uh, we understand the value of this. For a believer, it means that uh, he or she will increase the prayer of thanksgiving, praising God. Uh, not to pessimist, not to be a pessimist person, but to be an optimist person, seeing the full part of the glass, not the empty part of. Uh, therefore, uh, it must be uh, very real incomes, uh, outcomes of this uh, crisis. I th I I think. Uh, the economy will collapse if it, if this lasts for a couple of months for the many countries, really, and it will come out a new ideologies. I think that socialist and communist ideas will come forth eventually uh, because uh, overspread poverty, unemployment. Uh, Therefore, this sort of social changes it will bring. Now, uh, we saw the value also social media, the uh, inter uh, internet media, and the opportunities and possibilities to use it. And it is, I think, it, 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 it will continue af afterwards. Uh, and the organizations we continue to use these social media applications in a better way. And also, uh, there are, of course, some uh, conspiracy theories. I don't know, uh, but perhaps they are not so conspiracy. I think we will soon start to discuss as humanity to, to take the chips on our body or on our brains for the health purposes or for financial uh, purposes, for virtual money, uh, digital money. That sort of issues, I think, will come uh, to our agenda to discuss. Uh, perhaps it is my good wish, of course, that the countries will will spend less money to armament and more money for the health and education of the people. Uh, yes, sort of things. Wonderful. Can I ask you to sign off with a one-minute prayer to inspire us, having spoken so beautifully about the power of prayer? Lord, we thank you for everything you gave us. Forgive us that we are not worthy children to you. We destroyed both your world and each other, but you created us in your image and likeness. You put the seeds of goodness in our soul, human soul. Permit us to prove the good in us, to prove as worthy children to you. We pray with all our hearts. You are the father of novelties. Give us new opportunities. Thank you very much to you. We worship you. We exalt you for everything you gave us and you will give us. Amen. Amen.